All right, it is 2130 in UTC plus two, 1930 in UTC. It's 2020. And we've just finished the sixth day of Academy. I'm Adrian, and I'd like to tell you, invite you to the BOF wrap up. Julian is already complaining that it might not be 2020. So, hey. Times and dates are an opinion. And certainly if you've ever read the K calendar core unit tests, you know that times and dates are very opinionated. Um, I have three things uh, that need to go in the announcements today. One is that there's one last escape room, one last chance to murder your fellow Academy peoples, or maybe discover the murderer. And you can do that at 20. 30 UTC. That's in one, I was going to say one hour. It's in 59 minutes. You'll still need to register if that's of interest. Tomorrow, there's a pub quiz. You don't need to sign up for the pub quiz. That's when Paul and I are going to try to be funny to all of you. And uh, I'm sure Adam will and John will be there to heckle us. I'd like to remind everyone as well that uh, we ask you not to record the off sessions. Please don't record them. We uh, that because that puts a lot of load on the server, and we don't like it. I'm so glad that we're also arguing about French abbreviations for UTC. Um, but in the meantime, I'd like to add, invite the people from this morning's boff, the licensing boff. Andreas Kortlandwehr was running the show. Hi. Um, yeah, we had a really good boss this morning. Um, we talked about how to present, how to better present the licenses of our applications and libraries to the user. Um, the main outcome is that we will try to uh, create one or two websites. It's not clearly decided yet. Uh, mostly inspired by what the Creative Commons uh, people are doing. It's a clear message. Um, what are the well benefits and what are the expectations uh, when people are using our appli applications and libraries split it by uh, what are the target groups and that we want to use as a central uh, information page used from several locations. And there is a new uh, licensing team on the GitLab instance where we starting to organize it. Okay. Thanks, Andreas. It's good to see the licensing stuff moving forward. Lots of awesome. new information there. Nicolas, I would like to invite you to tell us about Android things. So we talked about one of our favorite Linux-based mobile operating systems, not the favorite. In particular, we talked about our tooling that runs the binary factory and can also help a lot when developing apps yourself how we can improve it, how we can improve the workflow of developing with it, and where we need more documentation. And on the code side, we talked about moving forward with some ongoing work that is right now living in several diff different repos and where we would like to move them to a more canonical place and frameworks. All right, thanks, Nicholas. Moving on from the second most favorite Linux-based mobile operating system to the most favorite, the Plasma Mobile boff was at 11 this morning. Someone from the Plasma Mobile team. Hi again. <laughs> hey. So we talked about our favorite mobile operating system. In particular, first of all, we talked about our bi-weekly blog posts that have sadly been anything but bi-weekly, and how we can uh, convince ourselves to push them more regularly. So we agreed to do them monthly now, and we talked about some aspects of the presentation of the release and how we're going to work on them. On the technical side, we talked a bit about performance, Unfortunately, on the current neon images we have since 
like two weeks ago, uh, pretty severe performance regression. We talked about some aspects on, of that and also some general notes on how we could potentially improve the performance of the whole system. Then we took a look at some of the larger outstanding tasks and talked about how to move forward with them. And we also took a look at the tasks on our 1.0 workboard, closed some of them because they were actually done. And for the others, yeah, discussed on how to proceed there. Thanks, Nicholas, for summing up all of our favorite mobile operating systems. After the break, things continued in sort of a hardware-y vein with the KDE Hardware Collaboration Boff. Aleish, you ran that show. Yeah, he's in there. So we need someone else to do it. I can All right. do it. Albert, please. So, yeah, there was a bit of a, a summary of what our current collaborations are. Uh, basically, Slimbook and the Pine people. Uh, and then we kind of went into a tangent from hardware to software in, in the fact that to be able to talk to, to hardware uh, companies, you need to be able to provide a uh, the full software stack yourself, and we aren't doing that, or we are, depending how you consider Neon to be or not a software distribution. So we had some uh, discussions about that. Uh, also, there was some discussions about the how we the world's moving a bit, a bit away from x86 to ARM, and we should try to figure out if and how we support ARM a bit better. Uh, yeah, and I, that's what I remember. So that would be it. All right, thanks, Albert. Then we had the Ocular Boff, which yes. was run by Albert. Hey, welcome Hi. back. Hello. So yeah, the Ocular Boff, we uh, discussed, so there's, there have been some patches that we introduced in the previous, previous release, and they have some nice effects, but then they also cause some progressions. There was some discussions about what to do with them, if just revert them or not, uh, we agreed we would come up with a list of things we want to fix it before saying we're going to revert them. So we are giving ourselves some time before the branching for 2012 to fix those. And if not, we'll have to sadly revert the changes, but we're hoping we're going to fix them. So I uh, hope there. We wanted to talk about uh, the website, but then we collided with the website both. So nobody from the website team was there. So we basically not, did not talk about it. Uh, there were some considerations about when we're moving to Qt6 and Framework 6. Uh, yeah, we will need to probably drop some backends, but it's not very used backends. So hopefully it won't hurt us very much. Uh, yeah, we decided to stop using uh, the versioning we use. We like Ocular is at version one, one dot something. Nobody knows the something. So we're going to go just to the 2008 one or 2012 that everybody uses, and that's going to be simpler. Uh, Cornelius joined a bit to talk about the Blue Angel uh, thing that it seems it's going to be using Ocular as one of the main uh, points to test how good we are with the environment and whatnot. Uh, yeah, there's a few more things. Uh, I will send the full report to the mailing list. Yeah, all in all, it was a very uh, good buff, I think. All right, thanks, Albert. It's really good when buff uh, managers send a summary to the mailing list, because that means that everyone who's also not here can read up on it afterwards. Um, I see Kai Uwe mentioning a dedicated Blue Angel boff on Friday. Things have been rescheduled. Anyway, Ocular got cruelly cut off by much more important things like Python. So, Christian, uh, tell us about the Python. I don't know if more important, but uh, yeah, as important, I will say. So yeah, we talked many things. Uh, first, uh, I give an overview about what are all these things about PyQt, PySight, and everything. So just to clarify some misunderstanding, and then we started to roll some ideas. Um, 
There are many cool opportunities to maybe try to make some of the KDE applications scriptable, kind of uh, implementing some plugin system and so on and so forth, but we needed some action points. So the first thing that we want to try, if someone here is interested in, is that we want to provide Kirigami for PyQt and PySite users. So everyone can use this delightful QML framework to build their own desktop applications even. And uh, so this will be kind of the first step. And the second and third and so on and so forth will be to see more or less what else will be worth doing. Maybe trying to improve Py KDE 5 effort that is already there in Fabricator, Fabricator Algorithm. And other crazy ideas about maybe having some binding generated things so system wide so other people can create bindings for our second favorite language, Python. All right. Thank you, Christian. That wraps it up for room one today. We'll move on to room two. Thanks, Allison, for setting up the, the slides with the schedule here for me. That helps a lot. And I'd like to thank Kenny and Kenny also for running the whole show in the background and Mamalok for doing the info desk stuff. Without you, the conference would be much less. Thank you. In room two, we had some of our newest kinds of contr contributors. The season of KDE and Google Summer of Code boff run by Kayo. Kayo, are you here? I don't see Kayo. Anyone else from the GSOC boff available to tell us about it? I see lots of people typing, so I'm, I'm going to give it a minute. All right. It seems that the GSOC BOF uh, doesn't have someone here right now at the BOF wrap-up available to talk about it. So let's move on to the KDE web stuff. Carl Schwann, please tell us. Uh, yes, yeah, so we had the website BOF, and uh, we talked about uh, the task in, on the fabricator board, uh, mainly uh, the remaining uh, website to uh, update and uh, or to move forward uh, with, uh, for example, Okula, the Okula website and a few others. So we still need to find uh, more contributors because it's uh, still a lot of work, but yeah. And that's it. <laughs> All right, thanks, Carl. Carl. Moving on in room two, we had two hours worth of consistency talk. Consistency is one of the three KDE goals elect voted in by the members of KDE EV and members of the KDE community. So it's really good to see the goals or the consistency goals group sitting down together. Nicolo or Claudius? You see, okay. so we talked about uh, many topics uh, such as the event sizes in the panel, the window decoration, and in some ways in what in which we could improve them, the app style, the cursor, and the file managers. Regarding, regarding this, we saw a presentation by Claudius uh, regarding consistency from a user point of view, and then we talked about uh, QML and QV just styling problems. All right. Thanks, Nicolo. That wraps it up for room two today. So moving on. Not four. There we go. Boff room three. We had the sysadmin boff. Nicolas. OK. Hey. Um... Uh, first, uh, we, uh, before the both, uh, we had a brief talk with, Bo with Volker about some um, uh, new uh, new setup where he's planning to do for uh, for uh, vector maps for Marble and for K itinerary. Um, then in the actual both, uh, we didn't take proper notes, and now that I, I was checking the details, we covered quite a few topics. Um, 
we talked about how uh, people can could uh, contribute without having actual access to the servers, which should make it easier both for people who are already in the community and for brand new people to KDE to help. But uh, we would like to know what people are interested in contributing to so that we prioritize uh, making it easier for those particular websites to be uh, run locally. Uh, we talked briefly about our uh, the, the new sysadmin documentation and getting some feedback from people who have maybe more experience on documenting that kind of stuff. Um, we discussed the, how we might do the migration from KDE identity to the new MyKDE. Um, then we also discuss MirrorBrain, which is used use for our uh, download mirror network. Uh, it's currently unmaintained and uh, we are looking for a replacement. And uh, we should probably uh, talk to other communities like GNOME or Linux distributions who probably have similar uh, needs and problems as, as us. And finally, there was some discussion about uh, um, whether we should have <clears throat> a strict requirement of only running free software on our servers, if it's really that important. Um, there are some cases where there's licenses that aren't strictly free software, but don't really have any practical uh, legal issues. And, and well, after all, most of us went to Carl's uh, web, both. Uh, that's all, I guess. Okay, thanks, Nicholas. I'm sure that will be a spirited discussion about free software or not on our servers. Moving on, we have the J'ai Compris meeting, which was run by Timote. Hi. <clears throat> Sorry, my webcam again doesn't work, so I'll just do audio. Um, so we had a great meeting for JComfrey today. We covered a lot of interesting topics, uh, from the future migration to Qt Quit Controls 2, which we want to do. But we will have uh, particularly issues with the calendar module, which is missing. So we need to see how to proceed. Uh, we discussed about how to improve the time to switch the activities categories, because in the latest version that increased a bit, we need to see how to improve that. We discussed, of course, the release plan for 1.0, uh, the string freeze next week, and how we will work with the promo team to advertise the release. We discussed about the plans for the future admin feature. Uh, we basically made a plan how to proceed. And we discussed uh, about the future localized data set feature, uh, which will actually will need the first that we have the admin part so users from around the world can create their own data set and share it so we can integrate some of those. We discussed about the user manual uh, we, that we are going to generate, and we need to improve a bit that generation. And uh, we need more feedback from translators to see where strings need context, and more feedback from teachers for activities and uh, other stuff. That's it. All right. Thank you, Timote. That wraps it up for room three today. Moving on to room four, we have Jose van den Uver. Um, Jos and Mevan, they talked about Rust. Rust never sleeps. So here's Jos. Jos, you are on mute. Let me fix that. Yeah, so we had a very nice uh, above. We started off with a poll among the 20 participants and asked them, do you know about Rust? Have you read about it in a blog or have you actually ever written some Rust? Well, most people just heard about it and wanted to know more. So we started off with an introduction about what is Rust? What are the advantages? How does it work? And uh, that was very nice. Mervyn and I switched 
in introducing various parts of the language which we live coded in a Rust playground. And then we got to talking, how can we combine Qt and Rust? We demoed a couple of applications, uh, such as a mail client that I wrote in Rust and Qt. And in the last part, um, we talked about how KDE can benefit from Rust. So we came to the conclusion that C++ applications, libraries, frameworks, they can actually use Rust inside of them, but we shouldn't try to wrap KDE inside of Rust crates. So Rust can really be like a strong dependable engine inside of our software. Uh, and maybe at some point we can also publish pure Rust code, but we shouldn't expect to put KDE code inside of Rust, but the other way around. The Rust can go inside of KDE applications. A couple of suggestions were to use Rust for CSS, SVG uh, functionality, where there are some very nice libraries at the moment, or we could use it to make Baloo uh, more stable and secure, or Cayo. Uh, those are two parts of uh, KDE that are really nicely separated, which could, uh, yeah, which we could be swapped out or maybe slowly moved into uh, a different programming language. And we ended up by opening communication channels, and we are still there now discussing uh, how to work on this. All right, thanks, Jos. I realize now that I should have made a mutable joke at the start of this. Um, moving on, we have one BOF session left before this wrap-up is wrapped up. The KDEV fundraising working group sat down with Aleish. Aleish is still at dinner. So if someone else from the fundraising group wants to say something about it. No one is jumping at the opportunity to talk about the fundraising working group. So, Hi, Kenny. Uh, oh, hey, I, I thought we were going to have um, someone else join. So yeah, we discussed um, some of the problems we've been having over the last year in particular and trying to unify the way that we just communicate together. So we're moving our main communication channel off of a hybrid of a mailing list and a telegram group to a slightly more free approach, which is the same mailing list, but uh, the same mailing list and matrix. Um, we also discussed some plans around our technology platforms and also our messaging. So we're gonna to try to spend a bit, of, um, put a bit of work into our long-term messaging we're also trying to um, work on CIFI CRM. Um, we know CIFI CRM has been a long-running um, problem for the community for quite some time. So this year is a year that we're really hoping to crack it. And um, as always, if anyone is um, what, uh, watching us live or seeing the video or is interested in joining the fundraising working group, um, you're more than welcome. Please just get in touch. All right. Thanks, Kenny. We're just about done. I just wanted to share my screen to show you off the pub quiz. The pub quiz is tomorrow. You don't have to sign up. You can just show up. And Paul, that's the one with the magnificent beard, and I will try to entertain you. We'll see you tomorrow. Have a lovely evening. Hit the hallway tracks and do good stuff with good free software. Cheers. <laughs>